So here's a problem. If it was on an exam, I would have some wording like this. Use the psychrometric chart. Or I could have the same problem, pretty much, and I may have the word do not use the psychrometric chart, meaning pay attention when you have an exam. Sometimes it's like don't use it. Sometimes you must show and use it, okay? Let's read this problem. Moist air at 27C, 1 ATM, 40% relative humidity flows at this volumetric flow rate over a cooling coil. It exits at this temperature. How would you use the psychrometric chart and solve for part A, which is determine the mass flow rate of dry air entering the coil? And I want to pause, walk around. I want to see your equations. How are you going to use the psychrometric chart to get some of the data for then you to use to compute the mass flow rate of dry air entering the coil? Professor, I paid a lot of money in tuition and fees. So I'll pick it up here for a little bit. So the mass flow rate of the dry air, hmm, m dot dry air. When you're given the volumetric flow rate coming in at state one, if you multiply by either the density of the dry air at state one, or you divide by the specific volume of the dry air coming in at state one, that'll allow you to get the mass flow rate. All right? So we already know that this is 0 0.5 cubic meters per second. And so I need to divide by how many um, meters cubed of volume per kilogram of dry air. Won't that give me the right units? I'll cancel the meters cube. So reading from the chart, I need this numerically. We know the units are meter cube per kilogram. What All right. So let's do this. It's 27. Is that the line of constant dry bulb temperature of 27 degrees? Right? All right. Is this a line of constant 40% relative humidity? They intersect at more than one point? No, they just intersect one point right there. Sometimes I'll even draw a circle around it to really emphasize. Point with a circle around it. Not a big blob, but there you go. Now, I want to calculate Get off of the chart the specific volume. Isn't this a line of constant specific volume? Yeah. And isn't this another line of constant? And down here, isn't this a line of constant? So if this value of that line was 0 0.085, and this one's 0 0.90, and we have this one, this one, this one, this one, which one, it's between this line right here, what value is that line? 0 0.86 and this line 0 0.87, the specific volume of the dry air. And it's multiple choices a lot easier, but uh, free response or numeric response is always fun too. Oh, we like... 862, we like 863. We'll take 86, even though I wanted more. Eight, what is this one? 861, do we want to take 861? What about 865? All right, fine, these people. All right, so now you have. Point uh, 0.862, I think that's a better number. And uh, then you're able to calculate this for the answer, yes or no? All right, now let's go to part B. How are you going to con calculate the condensate flow rate? When are you going to get condensate? You, when the outlet temperature is less than the dew point. And so basically, calculate the dew point temperature, dew point temperature for the inlet moist air stream and give that in two significant digits in units of degree C. Degree C. We won't 
All right, so let's go ahead and stop this. Uh, I'll just close it out. And I'll go back to the psychometric chart. And at this point, that's the point of interest. What we do is we conceptually say, do not increase or decrease the amount of moisture in that air, but start to cool it and cool it and cool it until it gets to be saturated air. At that point, you cannot cool it anymore without some of it doing out. That's called the dew point temperature. So we cool it, we cool it conceptually in our mind. We cool it, we cool it, we cool it, and then we finally get to this point. Notice that the relative humidity went from 40% to 50% to 60% to 70% to 80 to 90 and then it hit 100%. And you did not change omega. Omega is staying constant. The humidity ratio stays constant until you can't cool it anymore without omega going down if you try to continue to cool it. So at this point... You can kind of read the temperature along this line, or it's even better just to drop down and then read it that way. Because at that point, the dry bulb, dew point, and wet bulb temperature are all the same at 100% saturation, you know, saturated air, 100% relative humidity. Well, I thought it was around 13 or 12. Oh, 12.5, yeah, 12.5 we take. Are there any other good candidates up here? I don't think 17 is that close. Oh, here is a 12, isn't it? That's a 12. 12 point. Wow. That's that's really good interpolation. Okay, 12.3. Oh, come on. Who's doing this? Are you doing the chart? Or are you doing it in some other tool, software? I mean, to get 11.7 and 11.8? Um, all right, let's see. 12.2, 13.1. You can tell, maybe I should limit it to two significant digits, and then that way it's easier to grade. All right, we're, we're done. All right, that's why when you have the exit temperature T2, which is uh, 15, it's it's greater than the dew point, which was like 12 and a half, let's say, degrees C, you didn't get it cold enough. And so there's no, no condensate. All right. What is the rate of heat transfer from the air to the coil? And again, it's, it's been cooled on the outlet to 15 degrees C. How are you going to calculate the rate of heat transfer from the air to the coil? Isn't that Q dot? Yeah, how do you calculate that? It's 7 kilowatts is the answer, but how do you calculate it? The mass flow rate of the dry air times the H coming in minus the H going out. The enthalpy of the mixture, that's the dry air and also the water vapor content. You know, it's a, it's a mixture enthalpy. These H's are actually in the psychrometric chart the specific enthalpy of the moist air, meaning that it's, it accounts for the water vapor in the air as well as the dry air. It, but it has units of how many kilojoules per kilogram of the dry air. First time you see that, it looks a little confusing, but we know what that is. So anyway, we have this a point right here, and we have to project back and just pick up what that uh, enthalpy at state one is. What's the enthalpy at state one look like? Around 50, right? Okay. Where on the, the psychrometric chart is my state two? What comes out after the cooling coil? Where is that? And then, once you know that location on the psychrometric chart, what is the enthalpy, that, that specific moist air enthalpy of the exiting air? at state two. That's my clicker question for you. I want that enthalpy to two digits only, not three. I'm only going to grade it to two significant digits, please.
Everybody should have had enough time to input the value of H2, right? The enthalpy is say 2. All right, so you have to come along a line of constant omega, and then you stop at whatever temperature that you stopped at. Wasn't it 15 degrees C? 15 degrees C? All right, so if you then project this up, 15 degrees C, what's it look like? Somewhere like 37, 38? 38, 37. Should we give 36 credit or not? No? How about 39? All right. numbers. All right, done. They're not here. They're just inputting junk. Okay. So let me see if I, I thought I had the numbers worked out. So this one is around 50. What did we say that was? 30, 38. That's 12. 12 times the mass flow rate of uh, 0.58. And what do you get? 6.96. Um, I think that's close enough to 7. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, we have another problem. And the other problem is this one. It's very similar, but what it gives you is it gives you the dry bulb and relative humidity. If you want, you can put this up there on the chart. So 25, 75, find it on that psychometric chart. Then find 12 and 95 at the exit. And what you're going to find is this omega-2 on the exit's less than the omega-1 on the inlet. Hence, you had to have some dehumidification. And for this, the condensate flow rate leaving the coil, you can calculate. So the way you calculate this is the mass flow rate of the dry air uh, times the uh, omega inlet minus omega outlet. All right. But the same way to calculate the dry air flow rate, and then this is the rate of coming off that cooling coil. Actually, we solved this problem, if my memory is correct, by hand, without the chart. And now we solve it with the chart. But you have to be careful. So again, when you're given a problem on exam, say, does it allow me or does it require me to use the psychrometric chart? Yes or no? And I go that route. Okay. On um, this one, I think I included a little more information on how to get the 75. It looks like 63.5 and 33.5 for the mixture enthalpies and the mass flow rate, keeping more digits than you should because this specific volume is only good to three digits. Look at that. Three significant digits is a stretch on that measurement, but I'm going to use a number good to four. I'm improving. No, uh, anyway, just leave it alone. Actually, this is good two significant digits, but anyway. Tricks, here's some more calcs. Actually, this one is done not using the psychrometric chart. The same problem, and it's using those equations that we showed. And the numbers are very consistent. So if you're good at the psychrometric chart, you can get really good answers. Good to two, three significant digits. With that, I move to the last topic that I want to talk about. How many have ever seen one of these devices? I got pictures of these. What are they called? Air compressors. Maybe you own one. Maybe your parents own one. Maybe you've been in a shop where they have them running all the time. Whoever goes out to the West Campus, SAE members, they got compressed air in the building out in the West Campus. And the air compressor is in the back right by the entry and uh, you hear it running all the time. Okay, I own one that's like this. It's a pancake air compressor. And uh, pancake meaning I can pick it up with the handle and move it around, hopefully if I'm strong that day. Maybe a two, two and a half gallon, but there's some really big ones out there. But what's interesting is, is you get water that collects in the tank. This would be the tank, this would be the tank, this would be the tank. And you get water in there and say, well, where does the water come from? It comes from the air. It ingests air into it, compresses, boosts the pressure of that air, puts it into a tank. The air then cools off back to room temperature if you give it a long enough time. And then 
when it cools off, it dews out moisture in the tank, and uh, you have to then drain the tank. The big uh, air compressor in the shop, it's like this in the West Campus, has a, a drain that's automated, and it'll blow down every couple minutes. The first time if you're ever out there, all of a sudden, psh, oh, what's that noise happening? Well, it's automated to purge some little air at the bottom, and if there's any liquid in it, it blows it out. So you don't have to remember to go do that. But as a homeowner, uh, you bought one of these maybe at Home Depot. You got the uh, user's manual like you should. You read it. Actually, I find that engineers like to read after they you know, really become a good engineer. They like to read all the details on what did I just buy and how do I use it. Anyway, there's some safety instru and instructions on the use of it. But when you read that manual, you'll see all this safety information. Risk of what? Fire or explosion? Hey, I had that in my garage, close to my kitchen, close to my house, close to my master bedroom. I have a what? Arcing? Bursting? I could get injured? B don't use this to supply air to some of my grandmother that's in the <laughs> other bedroom. Uh, unauthorized? Oh, boy. Keep oh man ventilated and then drain the tank how often do i need to drain this daily i need to be out there daily draining my tank or whenever i use it because the rust can uh, cause the tank the tank to fail and i i cropped off that word but i think you know what that word means <laughs> explosion now i know all of you want to run back to home depot and get a refund because this thing is so dangerous but Anyway, attorneys wrote that. Anyway, down here on number eight is a, uh, a drain valve. And uh, hopefully everybody that owns one of these knows that there's a drain valve, and then periodically you need to open it and blow it out. How many people have ever opened the drain valve? Okay, what did you see come out? Well, even, even mine, it, it came out kind of a... a orangish uh, colored rust water and if you spray it on your concrete now you got a little orange spot on your concrete floor of your garage make sure you spray it out where it's not going to stain too much who else has seen that done that yeah good okay so where did that water come from air you know what one of the great things i love about teaching class like this is it can be used to explain the world around you and predict things like this and you are equipped with all the tools to really analyze this. You say, I don't feel like it. Well, you do. <laughs> you do. So I know you have to make some engineering approximations in this game, but you can do it. We put a little box, and we have moist air flowing in and out of that. We call it a COMP. Hey, what do you think I mean by COMP? Compressor. Then after the compressor, we know it's toasty hot. But then we put it in a tank and let it sit for a long time. It's like passing it through a device that cools it. I know we don't pass it through a heat exchanger, but we're approximating what's happening. And then finally, after it, we then bring it out and supply it to a tool down the line in the shop or in the garage somewhere. So we'll talk about state one, state two, and then state three. All right. And then what we're going to find is, is you put a little pan called a drip pan on there because you really are going to generate some liquid. All right. So state one, what is the pressure of the air at state one, the moist air pressure, atmospheric pressure? You can work in PSIG, zero PSIG. You know what? You can work in PSIA. What is it in PSIA? 15 I know 14.7, we're going to round off 15 PSIA. If I said that 15 PSIA is the absolute pressure of the air in this room, somebody says, I don't want the no PSI, I don't want to see it for the rest of my life, just tell me that in kilopascal. What is it in kilopascal? 100 kilopascal, roughly. All right, somebody says, what is the air pressure coming out of the compressor? What is the tank air pressure in my home, you know, compressed air system, in the compressed air system, in the shop that I've worked in, or wherever? Who's got a number for me? 
about 100 and 160, 140. You could throw around. A lot of our tools run needed at 100 to 120, somewhere in there. So different shops have different pressures. Let's say that this pressure right at 2, and that that's going to be the same as the pressure at 3, is about 120 PSI. Hey, you just quoted 120 PSI. You think he quoted gauge or absolute? All right, gauge. I want to convert that to absolute. Help me a little bit. Add 15. Part is math you're going to do today. 135 PSI A. Tell me what is the pressure ratio P2 over P1. This is what a typical compressor is going to do. It's going to ingest room air, dump it out at 120. I know you could have it 140. I know you could have it set at 100, but most of them will be around 120 PSI. What's the pressure ratio? 135 divided by 15 is around 9. Right? That's our pressure ratio. All right, somebody tell me roughly the temperature that's in this air, in this room, or wherever you're ingesting into this air compressor. 75 degrees F, after my own heart, but we're doing degree C today. 25 degrees C. Uh, I want to round that off, and I want to put an absolute. You just give me a number for absolute in Kelvin. 300. See what the engineer's doing? Just rounding these numbers off. Can you tell me the temperature at state 2? Can you estimate T2? I'm going to pause. I want you to tell me what T2 is. T2 is T1 times P2 over P1 to the power K minus 1 over K. That's an ideal gas undergoing isentropic compression. If your compressor is not isentropic, it's only going to come out hotter. But that'll be the minimum temperature it comes out if it's insulated well in isentropic compression, right? So this is a good estimate. Isn't that a good estimate? That comes in around 5-something, and it comes in, and when you take off 273, it comes in around 290 degrees C. Is that your number back there, 290-ish? Yeah. All right. Is that hot? or not. Can I touch that, hold my hand on the outlet pipe of the compressor if it's running steady state for a long time? Anybody ever tried to touch the outlet pipe of a compressor, air compressor in a shop? Yeah, you probably burned yourself. It's hot. Sometimes these big air compressor systems will have an intercooler system to reduce the total electric consumption. We talked about that. But here, we're just throwing that out. There is no chance you're going to condense the fluid at state two. But once you take it through the cool, allow it to cool, like I'm modeling a heat exchanger, that's when you would get the condensation. So let's continue to work on this. What would be a good relative humidity for the inlet air? You said it was about 75 degrees F. What's the humidity in the, of the air in this room right now? 50%. Let's not quibble. Let's not go 40, 70. I really need to know, Professor, these things with this uncertainty is too, no, no, 50%, let's move forward. You know, you can calculate omega-1. You know, you could do a pretty good job of just reading it off the chart. How many people would know what omega-1 is just off the chart? 25C, 50% relative humidity. We don't want it to three digits. We just want it to one or two. Who do you get for omega-1? Zero point... Zero, one, maybe throw another one on there or leave it alone. Looks pretty good there. So now, what is either phi 2 or omega 2? Which one of these do you think you'd rather predict with confidence at this stage in the calculations? Phi 2, the relative humidity at state 2, or omega 2? Omega-2. Why is omega And what's the value of omega-2? It's omega-1. It's equal to 0 0.01. You know, at this point, you can go and calculate V, the relative humidity at state 2. Now, this is kind of funny. You think about relative humidity about the air that you like to stick into your lungs. Now, the, the, let me ask you this question. 
Does anybody want to breathe around 290 degrees C air? No. no. So this is kind of a crazy relative humidity in our thought process, in our experience. But you could say the, the relative humidity I'm going to calculate by going and getting the vapor pressure divided by P sat at 290 degrees C. P sat at 290 is sky high. Look at the tables. You know, it's way high. Right? It's above the boiling point of water. It's huge. Guess what the relative humidity is going to be? 0 0.00 blah, 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 something. It is really small, really low. But that's not the main point. The main point is, is omega-2 is equal to omega-1. You haven't dropped out any moisture or anything. Some, some person who won't know this will say, the humidity is so low, you had to have destroyed or lost that water vapor somehow. And if you work in an industry, you'll have to probably answer a question like that at some point in your life. It's like, no, no, the water is gone. The water left somehow out of the compressor because look it, it was 50% relative humidity. Now it's like 0.01% relative humidity. It had to have gone somewhere. It's not in the system anymore. And I've even heard stories, I'm not seeing it particularly in my own experience, where systems were run like that for <clears throat> multiple months, if not years, thinking that that was dehumidifying it. Oh yeah, the relative humidity went down, but what about omega? It didn't dehumidify nothing. It was the same. All right, now, but now let's move to the cooler. We're going to cool it. We're going to bring this pressure still to 135 PSIA. It's not a pressure drop device. It's just you're letting it cool. What about the temperature? What's reasonable for the outlet temperature? It'd be like the final storage temperature of the tank, you know, the air compressor tank in the in the garage or in the office or in the shop. I think it's back down to 25 degrees C, back down to 300 Kelvin. All right, but the pressure, the total moisture, moist air pressure is high. So now at this point you say, what is phi 3 or what is omega 3? If you start the assumption that this is 0 0.01, you'll get that this is in excess of 100%. And then you'll say that's impossible. It, it can't be greater than 100%. So what you'll have to do is you'll say, I'm going to assume it's equal to 100%. What is it? What are you doing when you're assuming that uh, the relative humidity at state three is 100 percent? That it's saturated air. And then you can now calculate omega three. All right, let's do this calculation. If the phi three uh, relative humidity is 100 percent, how do I calculate omega three? 0 0.622, the pressure of the vapor at state three, the pressure of the dry air at state three. Is that equation still good? Is that equation good? Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. I want you to calculate the pressure of the vapor at 3 as a number. Let's work in kilopascal. And uh, the pressure of the dry air at state 3 in kilopascal. Both of these are in kilopascal. And, uh, oh, by the way, this pressure at 3 is 900 kilopascal, isn't it? Since I'm, I'm, yeah, it's 900 kilopascals. So give me those two numbers in kilopascal. I'm going to pause and walk around. So I checked the number of people. A lot of them already have it. Is this uh, three point what five one six nine? Is that right? And then this is 900 minus three. So like. Uh, 897-ish. All right. And then when you put it into the calculation for omega-3, what do you get for omega-3? So let's compare these two numbers. 0 0.010 and then it went to 0 0.002. What percent of the water vapor which was ingested condenses in the tank? 
80%. Good engineer. See that? You can see the numbers. It went from 10 down to 2. Where did the 8 go? It condensed, right? Isn't that amazing how much actually condenses? And this is not at, at extraordinarily high humidity. It's just this room temperature and, and relative humidity right here. Let's say you're working in Louisiana in the middle of summer, and it's brutal hot, and it's brutal humid, right? Uh, you better drain that air tank more often because you're going to get a lot of water collecting inside that air compressor tank. All right. So hopefully these numbers start to make sense to you. Um, with that, I thank you for your attention, and uh, we'll see you for the exam.